G'day, I'm here today to talk to you about the Pure Performance range of products, all fall within the low VAC category. Today we're going to be looking at how to go about using the water-based uh, gloss trim finishes on doors and woodwork. Hopefully today we'll be able to give you some tips that are going to help you when you're out there using the product. Well, what we're going to do now is use the Pure Performance Prep Coat on a ready coat door. I'm just going to show you how to get a really good effect using the prep coat so we can get it all prepared to use the gloss trim. Okay, what we've found in using water-based uh, gloss finishes on, on, on doors and so forth, we actually recommend the 4mm microfiber roller cover sleeve. There's a few reasons for it. One of the main reasons is it doesn't introduce a heavy stipple, so it actually puts the paint on, puts it on quite smooth, which is going to allow us to get a really nice finish when we put our gloss trim on. So all I'm doing here now is just going to load up the roller, and you can see I'm using a, a short arm extension just find it a bit easier when I go about to roll the door. Yeah, it's just roll the Pure Performance Prep Coat onto the door. I'm not going to overload it. And you'll notice as I'm rolling, I'm not getting a heavy stipple. It's actually coming out quite smooth. What you want to try to avoid is overworking the product. You just want to put it on the door and lay it off as quickly as possible. Our first coat of Pure Performance Prep Coat on the door. We're going to let that dry now, and then we're going to come back and give it our first coat of gloss trim. We've let the door dry now, we've put the prep coat on, fully dried out, we're going to sand it down now and get it all ready to put the Pure Performance gloss trim on. I've got the 120 grit sandpaper out, I'm just going to give it a light sand, I don't want to go too heavy on it, um, and then once I've done that I'll dust it off and get it all ready to put the Pure Performance gloss trim on. The beauty of the Pure Performance prep coat, it sands down quite easily. So it'll leave you a nice smooth surface. It doesn't tear away and gummy up like some other undercoats out there in the marketplace. So it's a good surface prep undercoat for going over doors, new or old. Just want to talk to you about the Pure Performance Gloss Trim. Now it's a water-based gloss trim finish designed for doors, architraves and skirtings. Now it's hard wearing, non-yellowing, like your traditional oil-based enamels can be, and it's quick drying. So it's quicker turnaround time for when you're painting and there's no smell, which is ideal for you and the consumer. Now, I normally roll my edges. Uh, that way I don't get any uh, thick, fat edges of paint on the face of the door. Now, obviously, if you've got hinges and stuff, you'll cut around them and roll up to them. I suppose the trick to it is, is just put it on, don't play around with it. Just quickly roll it on, don't overwork it, leave it now, let it dry, and then come back in a couple of hours and we'll give it another coat. There you go. Okay, we've dusted it down now, sanded it and dusted it down. Now it's ready for its last coat, the Pure Performance Gloss Trim. You can even see just how much wider it's picked up on, on on the second coat of the gloss trim. So there you go, it's had its second coat of Pure Performance gloss trim, that door's finished. One of the biggest things that we come across with painters who want to use a water-based trim finish is that their expectations of it working like a gloss enamel. Now it's a water-based product, so when you try to brush it out, you know you're going to get brush marks and so forth. Try not to treat it like the traditional oil-based gloss enamels. Treat it as something new, because it is. It's a new product out there. One of the things that you've got to be weary of is that it doesn't have the same self-leveling effect as gloss enamel does. So just trying to minimise brush marks and so forth, it's quite simple to do. Traditionally, you would tip off an oil-based door. When you look at what we've done today, and you look at the finish that we've achieved, you can get a really good finish just by using the roller finish. If you've got an area where you've got to tip it off and you've got no other choice and you really want to get it nice and smooth, look at the wet rub process. By cutting it back, you get a nice smooth surface. That then allows you to minimise your brush marks on your next couple of coats. Now we're going to look at going over an existing water-based gloss trim finish door that's a, yeah, about a year old. We've got to go back there and repaint it. As you can see here, that's the water-based gloss trim finished. The colour's held up quite well. 
I've got to come back and repaint it. Now, you wouldn't expect a year old door to be in this kind of condition. So, it's had a bit of damage over the, over the year. Kids going along. You can see here, that door now has got a fair bit of damage on it. Now, it's a pretty quick and easy way to go about fixing that up. Keeping in mind, all I really want to do is give this one coat. That's what I'm getting paid to do. What I've got here, just a medium fine sanding, sanding block. We all carry them in our cars. And I've got a little bit of water. Now you can use a spray bottle, or you can dip your sponge in there. And all I'm going to do, you can see how well the pure performance gloss trim has cut back and sanded it down. And you can see the marks and the damage that was on there is all gone. The beauty of it too is by doing it this way, if I'm in a sensitive area where there's computers and you know, expensive equipment, you don't want dust floating up into the air. You don't want it floating up into the aircon either. So I've encapsulated the, uh, the dust by wet sanding it. And you hear this. You feel that smoothness there? It's going to give me a really good surface now to put my next coat on that we've got to repaint. We've taken off all the damage and the graffiti that was on there. It's all dry now. And it's going to quickly roll it with a coat of pure performance gloss trim. The beauty of the product and the process that I've done is that when that dries, it's going to look like it's almost been sprayed on. So realistically, there's no real need to try to lay it off or tip it off with the brush. We've had a look at the wet rubbing process and how well the product cut back. Now if you've got heavy brush marks and those, and or heavy damage, you can actually cut it back with a bit of 400 wet and dry as well. The beauty of that is, is the more you cut it back, the smoother the surface comes. 